Greetings everyone, hope you're keeping well up here, as I'm sure you all know by now, my name is Alex, and today we are here to check this out, which is in fact a mini portable LED projector. Now this projector right here, which is in fact the YG300, is probably what you call a more of a budget range projector. And I'm quite curious to be honest with you, to see just how good it actually is. So that is exactly what we're gonna find out today. We're gonna start off with the usual quick unboxing, and then we are gonna test it. Kicking off with the packaging then, well, as you can see, it is a nice cardboard box with a rather bright and colorful design, and of course, a picture of the LED projector on the front. And then on the side here, we are greeted with a list of specifications. So for example, we've got contrast here of 800 to one. Then we have a native resolution of 320 by 240, and it supports a resolution of 1920 by 1080. So basically what that means is that yes, you can plug in your HDMI cable, or you can watch a film that is in HD quality format. However, the actual projection image itself will only be in a 320 by 240 format. The light itself is obviously LED and it has a lifetime of approximately 30,000 hours, so that's pretty cool to be honest with you. Now the projection distance is between 0.8 and 2 meters, and then the size, the actual size of the screen that this projection can provide is anywhere between 24 and up to 60 inches, so that's, that's nice and big. Opening this up and we are greeted with a lot of protection and styrofoam, which is obviously all good because you don't want your projector to be damaged while it's in transit. But that is the box, there's nothing else in there, so we don't need that. And if we remove this, we are then, of course, greeted with the projector and its contents. And you know what? It's nicely packed, I must admit, and it is very secure as well. So to begin with, what is this? We have, oh, it's a little remote control and, oh, you know what? That's actually, quite nice. I mean, you've got the basic controls on there. It feels nice and stylish. I don't think there's any batteries in there, but let's just see what it requires. Right then, so two AAA batteries. We have a AVI cable, I think that is, which isn't the longest, but you know, at least they've actually enclosed it in the package, so it's all good. That is some extra brownie points there. This is the power adapter, but to me, this is not gonna fit in one of our UK plugs, but as you can see there, what they've done, they've included a UK adapter, so good on them because otherwise, I'd be a bit stuck there. But let's just see how long this actual power cable is, because you know how I feel when it comes to the length of cables? It's got to be nice and long, but why is it just gonna struggle. Oh, it is, it's nice and long. What's that, probably about, what, one and a half meters, maybe, if you wanna be metric? But yeah, I'm happy with that length, because no matter where you plug in your projector, whether it be attached to the ceiling, maybe, or on a wall, or on a tripod, there's a nice length there that'll give you plenty of mobility, no matter where you want to plug it in. And last but not least, we have the actual projector itself. Let's just remove that there and put it in there. I'm just gonna put this to one side, and there it is. And you know what? Straight away, that looks very smart. It really does. It's extremely compact. And it actually feels a lot more expensive than it should be because it just has this bit of extra elegance in its design, or elegance, should I say, because it really does look very nice. So we've got a nice big lens there, and mm, I don't know if that is glass or plastic. It doesn't actually stipulate, I'm afraid. But look at this. Just look at how many outputs and inputs this little projector has. I mean, for starters, we've got a USB input. We've got a HDMI input. And then, of course, we have the power input and a little on-off switch as well. But then on the back, we have a micro USB input, a micro SD card input, and then we've got an audio video output, and then, of course, the standard 3.5 millimeter jack headphone input as well. So clearly you can see they've tried to think of everything that you might want to use this projector for and whatever you do plan to use it for, there should be no problems there whatsoever. But of course, how good is the actual projection, which is the main thing you all want to know? Well, I'm gonna set this all up now. I'm gonna put an SD card in it. I'm gonna attach my PlayStation to it. And let's just see how good it actually is. Okay then, so here we are set up in my son's bedroom, and as you can see, I have the mini LED projector mounted on a tripod, approximately one to one and a half, maybe just under two meters away from the back wall. Once you turn on the projector, you are presented with a menu screen, and I've got to admit, I'm surprised with how bright and colorful it actually is. Now, of course, if you look closer, you will see that it is slightly distorted. But don't forget, this is a 60-inch display, and you wouldn't be sitting that close anyway. So at normal distance, the picture quality actually looks quite good. 
Taking a quick look at the menu options, you will see along the top that we have movie, we've got music, we've got photo and text. So obviously you would choose the appropriate mode depending on what you're planning to show your audience. You also get the ease of use for selecting your input. As you can see there, you have HDMI, you've got AV, etc., etc. But let's just say you are not entirely happy with the picture or sound quality, then you can manually adjust them in the additional menu, as well as having the options of adding a clock onto the display or even updating the firmware of the projector too. But now let's just check how good a film actually looks once it is projected. Now this film is in 1920 by 1080p format, but obviously the projector will show it in its 320 by 240 format. So as you can see, this is some footage from the film Back to the Future 2. And to be honest, although it is slightly dark in some areas, the picture quality alone is fairly reasonable. Once again, it's on a 60 inch display and looking closer, you would see that it is not in HD, but at normal seating distance, it really is quite satisfactory. Let's try a photograph then. So I've downloaded a HD photograph and placed it onto my memory card. And I'm just gonna pause it here to stop the automatic slideshow option. But there we go. The picture itself is very nice and bright. And the color itself is very clear too. Again, upon closer inspection, you can see that it isn't in sharp focus, but for just displaying maybe a few holiday snaps or funny slides, it actually works quite well. Now let's try some writing. So let's just say you were going to use this projector in a presentation. So I put some writing there and it says mini projector in various size fonts. Now obviously you can see the top text there and just about make out the second line. But as for the third, fourth and fifth line, unfortunately they are pretty much unrecognizable. So just bear in mind that if you did want to use this to show some kind of text or writing, it would have to be in quite a large font for your audience audience to be able to read it. But how does this do on gameplay footage? Well, in some ways it works and in some ways it doesn't. Now I've linked up the mini LED projector to my PlayStation 3 and this is a loading screen with some writing on and unfortunately you can't really make out what it says. Now as for gameplay itself to be honest, it is pretty okay. Yes, once again, it is a lot darker in some areas than I would like, but you can still easily play the game, and that is what is most important. I think maybe if you were doing a more of a multiplayer option, you know, with possibly up to four players, or even just playing something that didn't require any reading, then I think you should be quite happy with the picture quality because you get a large 60 inch display, basically without the need to buy and set up a huge television in your room. And finally, I would just like to show you this projector in action during normal daylight hours. Now, obviously all projectors work better in a darkened room, but there it is, projecting a film onto the wall, even though it is broad daylight, and you can still make out that this is the classic movie Titanic. But obviously for a true and more enjoyable experience, I would definitely recommend using this with either the curtains closed or even a blackout blind if possible. So there we go, that was just a quick overview and of course demonstration of this mini micro projector in action. And you know what, in some ways it works well and in some ways it doesn't work well. Now I know you're all thinking, but the picture quality just isn't that good. And yes, in some ways I do have to agree because it isn't exactly high definition. However, in his defense, when I set this up in my kid's bedroom, now he is only five, but he had a few friends around, okay? I put on a favorite film of his choice, and there it was, projected onto a 60-inch display, and they were all 
absolutely made up and they just sat there watching it, not bothered that it wasn't in HD. So I honestly think that is what this projector is for. So let's just say you've got a kid's playroom, you've got a kid's party, or even just in the kid's bedroom. You can set this up knowing that if something happens to it or if it gets broken, it can be easily replaced because it's so affordable. But most importantly, they won't be bothered about the clarity of the picture. They'll just be made up to have this huge projection of their favorite film on the wall of their choice. Now, of course, before I go, if you've got any questions or comments you'd like to ask me about the mini LED projector, then you know what to do. Put them in the comment section below and I'll get back to the answer as quickly as possible. And of course, not forgetting, if you enjoyed this video and you like tech, then please show your appreciation by giving this video a fantastic thumbs up and don't forget to hit me up on that classic subscribe button. But until next time, thank you once again for watching and I'll hopefully see you at some point very soon. Thank you.